So we shall move. Hi, yes. Um, so I'm, uh, as, as Mike said, I'm Luis. I just moved here from, uh, uh, I did my PhD at Penn and I just joined as a postdoc at the, for the collaboration on the theoretical foundations of deep learning. So my background is actually in engineering and signal processing. And that's how I got interested into looking at requirements or embedding requirements into learning. And essentially today I'd like to answer just four questions, essentially why, when, how, and what's next or where do I see this going next? So in terms of why, let me start by motivating this idea of learning on the requirement with um, an example, uh, essentially in uh, image recognition. Now, image recognition is a task that we became exceedingly good at solving. However, the solutions that we obtain are typically quite brittle, very small perturbations of the input can lead to drastic changes in the accuracy of the classifier that we obtain. And the typical way to address this problem is to use this technique known as adversarial learning, where we will replace the nominal performance measure, so there are loss on, on the data that we have by a perturbed performance measure simply uh, that embeds worst case perturbations of the cost. And that's a, a technique that is quite effective at increasing robustness, so increasing adversarial accuracy, albeit at the cost of nominal performance or performance on the clean data degrades due to that. The typical way to deal with these trade-offs in optimization and machine learning is to use these techniques based on penalties where we combine both of these losses into a single objective that we then train our model on. The issue with this technique is essentially related to this parameter lambda that we need to choose in order to you know, balance those two costs because there is no straightforward relation between the value of lambda and the value of that loss. Uh, it turns out that we need to, to find it essentially by trial and error. And that means that actually the value of lambda ends up depending on the data itself, which you know, raises some questions about generalization. In particular, we can give guarantees from classical learning on the aggregated objective generalization, but not necessarily on each of the parts separately, which is the thing that we're actually interested in doing. So the way that I propose to overcome this issue is to use constraint optimization in order to formulate the exact problem that I wrote on top of the, of the slide, right? Which is, we want to find classifiers that have the best possible clean performance among those classifiers that have good robustness, good robustness properties. And here you can see that the robustness, which is a requirement that we impose, actually appears as a constraint rather than a cost. So it's slightly more natural formulation and also has this advantage of decoupling our measure of performance from the requirements that we actually want to impose. Um, now, I just want to point out that there is this idea sometimes that this constraint problem is somehow related to the um, to this penalty based problem. And in the case of convex problems, that is actually true in non convex. That is not even typical. So there might not exist a value of lambda that actually provides us with a solution that is uh, feasible or optimal for this problem, right? Because strong duality uh, need not hold in, in general cases. However, if we were to go ahead and solve these problems with methods that I'll show later, we can actually um, obtain essentially the same level of, of uh, robustness that we would obtain using adversarial learning, but with a much better nominal performance. And recently we actually showed um, that using these techniques, we can actually obtain a state-of-the-art results in, in, in benchmarks in adversarial learning. Now, constraint learning is not used only for adversarial. Obviously, it's a more general framework that we're interested in looking. And we have even uh, some examples, for example, in fair classification and also in uh, the reinforcement learning or uh, of safe policies. Now, obviously, this effectiveness raises the question, some theoretical questions in terms of learning of, Okay, it works, but is it true that uh, when is it possible to actually for us to learn on the requirements? In other words, when is it that the solution of that empirical problem actually generalizes, right? I mean, in, in practice. And it's a simple exercise in a union bound to show that, you know, if you can learn those uh, separate losses, I mean, those problems, if you can solve those learning problems separately, you can solve them jointly, right? So in a certain sense, in a learning theoretic sense, constrained learning is not really that different or much harder than unconstrained learning. However, while that tells us something about generalization doesn't really tell us how we're supposed to solve that uh, constrained ERM problem, right? In the, in, in the typical setting in machine learning where we're gonna have nonlinear functions, which means non-convex problems, in the unconstrained case, maybe we can hope to find a local minimum that perhaps is even good, right? Using some sort of local search like gradient descent. But here, even finding a feasible problem, a feasible solution might be uh, quite challenging, right? And, that brings us to our next question of, you know, how, how could we go about uh, trying to learn these problems? And it turns out that the answer is related to the concept of duality 
in, in optimization. Now, in optimization, duality is a property that associates to each constrained problem an unconstrained problem, right? Which is a lower bound on the original problem. In certain cases, like convex optimization, like I mentioned before, it turns out that these problems can be shown to be uh, equivalent in, in many senses. In general, that is not true. That doesn't hold. So for the convex problems that we are looking at here, that actually not is, is not a property. So to overcome this, this issue, what, uh, what I use is a technical discovery, essentially, that shows that even though non-convex finite dimensional optimization problems are typically not strongly dual, it turns out that their infinite dimensional counterparts uh, manifest very similar duality properties as convex optimization problems, essentially. And to give you a concrete handle on this idea, it essentially means that, you know, while sparse logistic regression is an intractable problem, it turns out that the uh, continuous version of that problem is actually tractable. We can give an actual algorithm to solve this problem. And uh, so, you know, the barrier of, of complexity here, of tractability, let's say, is not, no longer between convex and non-convex, but between discrete and continuous, essentially. Now, that has a lot of applications in, obviously, in functional sparsity that we have explored. But what matters to us here is the fact that even though we cannot relate the solution of the dual to the solution of the primal problem, of the constrained ERM problem, we can actually directly show that the solutions of this empirical dual generalize to the whole population, which is what we actually cared about. Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of details about this, uh, about this type of results, but essentially in practice, what this means is that if we can find, if we are able to solve unconstrained learning problems, approximately, then we are able to solve constrained learning problems as well, right? Uh, using techniques such as uh, dual ascent. In terms of what's next, there are a lot of challenges still in, in this problem. There are three things that I would like to, uh, I'd be interested in looking into. The first one is with respect to applications, obviously, uh, especially non-conventional ones like uh, stability, semi-supervised learning, also semi-infinite learning programs, which uh, we have been using for that adversarial problem and also to learn functions with smoothness that has a very interesting uh, connections with sampling as well. Uh, also, I'm interested in algorithmic uh, challenges, right? I mean, those gradient descent ascent dynamics in non-convex settings the behavior of these things are not as well as understood as gradient descent dynamics in non-convex settings, and also the issue of primal recovery, which is a big problem in duality. And uh, I'm also interested in looking at statistical properties, especially of these, um, these functional sparse problems, right, which, which have a lot of application, especially in their use in, you know, in order to train and perhaps analyze uh, infinitely wide neural networks. So, uh, you can find more information about this on my website, and if there's anything that you saw here that piqued your interest, please feel free to reach out to me or uh, talk to me during this next year or so. Thank you. Perfect.